I wanted to share an update on this Hover Games drone. Previously, I had covered the kit and the build. It's very well thought out. I've been impressed. And just recently, I've been able to uh, maiden in stabilize mode as well as position mode. And everything worked well after I did some vibration analysis. So I just want to uh, share a before and after and also just stress the importance of making sure that uh, your flight controller is well isolated. So initially I had installed the uh, NXP FMU that comes with the kit with the double-sided sticky tape. You can see how thin it is and uh, really just led to all sorts of oscillations. And in a minute, we'll take a look at some of the analysis, the charts uh, that I was able to uh, create just by pulling the log files off of this guy. When I did the initial flight, uh, there was a lot of weird oscillation. I've done a lot of PID tuning over the years and just really noticed that uh, the behavior of the aircraft was not uh, what I had seen previously where you have consistent oscillations, uh, whether they're large or small. This was sort of jumping all over the place. And finally, after pulling the logs, I was able to do some analysis and narrow it down to just the mounting of this FMU. And I want to clarify that when I mention FMU, that's the term uh, the NXP guys use. It's the flight management unit. You might refer to it as an FC or a flight controller. And let's take a quick look at how it was hovering before I applied a uh, new foam. This is the Q500 airframe configuration from Q Ground Control with the uh, white thin foam provided in the kit. You can see how unstable it is. It's actually really hard to control, so I tested in both manual and stabilized mode. If you get this kit, do not use the sticky foam that comes with it. One thing that I've always been a huge fan of, you guys might remember this stuff, it is the a foam that came with the 3DR flight controllers, the APM as well as the Pixhawk. It's this 3M. I don't know how accessible it is anymore, but this stuff is really magical. So I've adhered it to four different corners of the FMU, uh, basically where I had the white sticky foam before. And let's take a look at the performance after this foam was added. Default mode on the switch is manual stabilize position mode see the propeller spin up all right so this is manual mode flying really well after getting those vibrations dampened with that 3dr foam okay so i'm going to go into stabilize Coming back to level. In position mode. Doing fairly well. Getting caught by a little bit of wind. So I'll take over out of position mode, went back into stabilize, and get it back on the ground. You can see there was a substantial difference. And uh, if you guys know a source for this, be sure to get some, maybe share a link below so that we can all benefit. But I'm going to end with just taking a look at the flight logs uh, before and after so we can see the difference in the vibration analysis. Before I dive into the log analysis, let me mention that I use this uh, flight review service uh, provided by the PX4 team, and it's really incredible. Uh, I'm able to pull the logs from Q Ground Control, upload them, and analyze them. And this page here gives a lot of great information. I'll put a link to it below as it relates to being able to identify the source of the problem. When you decide to go through this process, it's uh, very important that you have configured your flight controller, a parameter, the SD log profile. You want to set that to uh, option four. That's this uh, high rate logging. 
let me start by explaining what we're looking at here. On the left is the problem scenario with the white uh, sticky foam, and on the right is with the uh, 3M foam. Now, the flight review documentation recommends sort of looking at your roll pitch and yaw angles and rates. And so if we look here at the left, what we want to see is that the red and green are tracking together fairly well. Uh, on the left, it doesn't look too bad, but on the right, we definitely have a lot cleaner tracking. Now, when we get down to the angular rate, you can see there's a lot more uh, noise in the problem scenario. So looking at the pitch angle, you can see the tracking is actually pretty good in the problem scenario. Uh, much cleaner on the right, and in the angular rate, definitely a lot more noise. Let me also point out that the red, blue, and red just represent the flight mode that I was in. So started off in manual, went to sta stabilize, back to manual. Uh, this scenario on the right is not what I demonstrated in the video where I was flying outdoors. This was a hover test indoors, so I tried to keep these two uh, scenarios as close as possible. But what this led me to believe is that since I used the Q500 airframe in Q ground control with the default PIDs, I decided that the PIDs should be left alone and really decided to take a look at the vibration. The Flight review documentation has some great examples. These were very helpful of charts of good and bad vibration. Let's quickly focus on this actuator controls FFT chart that shows an example of bad vibration. So taking what we know from the documentation, looking at this FFT chart, uh, the goal is to have a maximum peak below 20 hertz uh, in a good vibration scenario. And you can see that we're nowhere near that. I think we have a a peak here almost at 90 hertz. This goes way up, so that's definitely not good. Now on the right, unfortunately, the FFT didn't chart. As I mentioned earlier, it talks about enabling high rate logging, which I did, but uh, anyway, we'll leave that alone for now. But looking at the actuator controls, zero charts. You see there's a lot of no noise on this roll axis where it's pretty quiet over here. And then if we go down to the actuator outputs, from the documentation. We just want these to be nice and clean, uh, tracking well with not a lot of noise. And over here on the right, you can see that we do have that. It's a nice and clean uh, chart. We'll take a quick look at raw acceleration. The documentation tells us that we definitely want this Z axis to be fairly isolated from the X and Y, not a whole lot of overlap. And that's specified in a hover scenario. Obviously, if you're flying in an acro mode or aggressive mode, there's going to be overlap, but there's a lot here just in a hover scenario, whereas uh, the scenario on the right where we've put the good foam in place, uh, not much overlap. So that once again tells us that we have some issues with vibration. Here's another very telling chart. It's the vibration metrics one. Now, keep in mind when initially I was doing this, I didn't really have a frame of reference, right? So if we look at this, most of the vibration is happening in this yellow area uh, above this 0 0.02 line. Now, if we look over at the right, you can see that uh, if we were to average this out, it looks like we're at the 0 0.02. Definitely a significant difference in uh, the vibration between the two. And let me leave you guys with one last thought. This really is what kind of pushed me over the edge, just really to dive into the vibration analysis. So. Once again, these are the actuator outputs, uh, left and right, before and after. And if we go to the documentation, you can see that it says, if the signals look very noisy with high amplitudes, two causes, sensor noise or vibrations passing through the controller. So based on that and my analysis of the PID stuff, I wanted to start with the vibration analysis, see if I could reduce that. And I have been able to, I've ordered new props, I'll put them on, but I know this was sort of long and drawn out, definitely longer than I had intended. Wanted to share my experience and what I went through, and I really feel like I have a good platform uh, to do some more fun things with. I'm going to be uh, mounting both a Raspberry Pi 4 with Ross and Mavros running to do some uh, programming, and I'll do also do that with the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. So thank you guys for following along. If you have any tips or questions, please leave them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.